and video call. Video call could probably be its own day with the stuff that we're doing with vMix call, but I'll add one. So um, vMix call over here, uh, you could host a call or connect to another call. Um, connect to call here. If someone else has a vMix call hosted on their vMix, I could do a direct vMix to vMix. A lot of times any remote contributors or most people using vMix call will do so on a browser, which we'll look at in a sec. Um, but um, if I had two vMixes on either side, you could just do it direct vMix to vMix, which is a really great, pretty high quality, low latency way of transporting video back and forth. Um, so that's something to know. Um, over here, if I am hosting a call, I get a link. If I hit copy link and I open it up here, um, I will have the password here, so I just need to put my name in to log on. But before I log on, I'm gonna make sure I actually add it as an input first. Um, over here, I can send any video source, one of the four outputs. Um, this is for the return bandwidth, not the receiving bandwidth. Um, so here I could, normally I'll set it to something low just to kind of avoid any network congestion or um, the fact that people are on home internets a lot, of, a lot of the time. So I'll kind of assume that they don't have good internet and send as low as possible. It's pretty much like the rule of thumb. And then I could send a specific audio source here. Um, so uh, we will bust them out. We'll kind of get into a little more details about how we have Remy 1 and Remy 2 set up uh, once I look into like why the other audio outputs aren't showing up. Um, but over here, I will um, set up what bus I want to send. And then these will kind of be the defaults for every additional vMix call that I want to set up. Um, so I'll do that there. Then again, here I have... Um, and then here I have uh, show advanced options checked off um, and then enable debug logging here. This is the best way to be able to send any support logs to the folks in vMix if you're having any issues with vMix calls. So I'll just out of habit try to turn that on before doing any vMix calls. So I'm just gonna hit okay here um, to add this call. And now that I have the call added, I could go into Chrome and join it here. So I'm probably sending it black right now. Or yeah, I'm sending it the whatever output I have assigned to it right now. That's my return feed. Um, over here is what my camera is showing. Um, so this can be moved around or it can be hidden. And then there's a chat here um, in call manager. I could say hello. All the vMix call participants can talk to each other on the chat. Um, and then me as a moderator um, using vMix call, I could open call manager and then type back here. So that's a good way in case like we, they can't talk for any reason or if they're having any issues with their audio and we're trying to help them troubleshoot, we could use the chat as a way to talk to them. Um, over here, you'll also notice um, some other features here. If I click on this guy, um, you could see the actual input, the, the name of the person as well as what your input name is and the call number. Um, I could also, if you scroll up here, get the link again in case you lost the link for some reason. You're just gonna wanna make sure um, Basically, it's gonna remember every single vMix call that you make. I'm gonna show you to change a vMix call, but keep the same settings in just a moment. Um, but uh, here, you'll get the link. Here, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure it's right below the password, so you could coordinate, make sure, okay, yes, it's caller uh, ends in 264, this is the link for it, okay, I'll give that. So it's, it's very easy to lose track of who's getting what call links and who's logging onto what. So we try to approach it very organized and try to pre-generate them all at once and have them written down like this caller is this, this caller is this, this caller is this. Um, sometimes we'll use um, rebrandly as a way to um, enable us to change the vMix call link without sending a new one. So rebrandly lets is basically, it's kind of like bit.ly, it's a website redirect slash tracker. Um, so we could see how many times people click on it. Um, and then we can change what the redirect is without the person knowing on the other side. So that way, if for some reason we need to change our vMix call link, um, we can do so with and just update it on rebrandly, but the user will still just use the same link. Um, so that's a, a fun thing that we've been able to do. One thing I have noticed is because it's a website redirect, some corporate firewalls don't like that. Um, so it might not work on some firewalls. It might not um, allow them to hit, they'll get the rebrandly link, open it up, and they'll get an error. So um, um, if that's not working for them for some reason, you should just be able to send them the vMix call link um, and they should get that. But then even with that, there are still a whole slew of other firewall things that could get in the way. A lot of times we'll establish a vMix call connection, um, but then they will not be able to actually send their camera video or audio or receive video. And that's a lot of times because there's a firewall in the way blocking that. So it allows you us to create the vMix call connection, but not actually send video and audio through. 
Um, so in that case, you got um, on vMix, you could look up the ports that need to be opened if they're not already, in case there's like an extreme firewall in the way. Um, and you could look that up and send that over to the IT team that's on the far end uh, to get that worked out. Um, and sometimes um, there will be the the, the way you kind of know something is wrong is if they're just getting a blue screen. Um, so sometimes you notice that just changing the vMix link out just fixes that. So because of that, that's why rebranding is really helpful. So we don't need to overwhelm them with links and confuse people. We'll just put their name in the link. So it's like, yep, this is just your link and we'll take care of updating it. Um, but um, in case we do need to change it, there's an easy way to do that without having to rearrange everything. Because a lot of times, you know, you'll have a four box or a multi-view set up with all of the vMix calls, and you don't have to redo it by closing the input out and then adding a new one. So to change it, um, I'm gonna go to here for the gear for uh, input settings. Then I go to change up here in the top right. And then by default, it gives me a video call here. Um, this, because it will remember the last one that we set them up with, we'll just have to double check they have the right, um, uh, settings. Normally, I, I like output four. I like the I like the ends of things to be the return feed. So it'll be like output four will be like a multi view to a producer, and three might be uh, like a PowerPoint or something like that. So I'll just make sure I have the correct one set up, and then the correct audio bus, which is super important to make sure they're getting the right audio. And then I'll just go over here and hit reset password. Um, uh, though though hitting change already gives you a reset password, um, but so you could hit it again if uh, just in case. And then you'll get a new link here to update. And then you can hit OK, and then that will stay there. And then anytime it's in a multi view or something like that, it will keep its settings. So then that way you don't have to rebuild from scratch every time you add a new VMix call, which is super cool.